Good day, I'm Brian Farrell, and welcome to Pace IT's session on WAN Technologies Part 2. Today we're going to be discussing GSM and CDMA WAN connections, then we're going to move on to WiMAX WAN connections, and we're going to conclude with satellite wide area network connections. There's a fair amount of information to cover, so let's go ahead and begin this session. And of course, I'm going to begin with the GSM and CDMA wide area network connections. All cellular carriers use one of two methods for connecting devices to their networks, and those methods are not compatible. Currently in the United States, AT&T and T-Mobile use the Global System for Mobile, or GSM standard, to connect their devices to their networks. Both Sprint and Verizon use Code Division Multiple Access, also known as CDMA, as their method of connecting to networks. And those two standards are not compatible. The majority of the rest of the world utilizes GSM as the method for cellular network access. Let me speak briefly about cellular networking. Cellular networking involves using the cellular phone system for more than just phone calls. Cellular networking has been around for a while, and it originally wasn't known as this, but the first version of it is 1st G or 1G cellular, and it was only capable of voice transmissions. As improvements came along, we got 2G. That is cellular with simple data transmission capabilities, as in text messaging. 2G Edge offered some basic cellular networking connectivity and was a stopgap measure between 2G and third generation cellular. 3G Cellular is the beginning of cellular WAN networking. It's giving way to 4G Cellular, which is still an emerging technology. 4G currently consists of both LTE and WiMAX. As a special mention, we need to talk about Evolved High Speed Packet Access, which is HSPA+. It was a stopgap between 3G and 4G networking. It's still available today. The current standard for HSPA Plus allows for up to a maximum data rate of 84 megabits per second. Now, it's not quite as good as LTE, which is long-term evolution. LTE uses an all IP-based core with high data rates. Now, LTE is compatible with both 3G and WiMAX. The current standard for LTE allows for up to 300 megabits per second in download speeds and up to 75 megabits per second in upload speeds. Now let me introduce you to WiMAX WAN connections. WiMAX stands for Worldwide Interoperability for Microwave Access. That's a mouthful. That's why we say WiMAX. WiMAX was originally developed as a last mile alternative to use when DSL or cable was not available. It can provide an alternative broadband connection to a fixed location. It uses microwave transmissions as an over the air method to transmit voice and data. It does require line of sight between relay stations. But WiMAX can be used to cover significant geographic distances. Also, many municipalities are exploring the use of WiMAX as a means of providing reasonably priced broadband to their citizens without having to wire every household. WiMAX is often considered to be a type of 4G technology because it is compatible with LTE networks. But WiMAX is not compatible with third generation cellular networks. It is time for us to conclude with satellite WAN connections. Satellite WAN connections are a type of microwave satellite networking. It uses microwave transmissions as an over the air method of transmitting voice and data, just like WiMAX. It can be an effective means of extending networks into places that are hard to reach. 
it does use microwave radio relay as the method of transmitting data through the atmosphere. Just like WiMAT, it requires line of sight relay stations, but it can cover even more distances than WiMAX. Why is that? That's because it utilizes a satellite network. By the way, because of the distances that satellite transmissions can cover, this can lead to latency problems. Think about it. The signal's got to go from a terrestrial location up to the satellite, probably over to another satellite, and then down to another terrestrial station. That's a significant amount of distance, and there's going to be some lag. I just talked about the communication satellite. They're also known as commsats. These do form part of the microwave relay network. Comsats can use a variety of orbits, including the Molina, geostationary, low polar, or polar orbits. The low polar and polar orbits are used to boost microwave signals before sending the signal back to Earth. Now that concludes this session on WAN Technologies Part 2. I briefly talked about GSM and CDMA WAN connections. Then I moved on to a WiMAX WAN connections, and then we concluded with satellite WAN connections. Now on behalf of Pace IT, thank you for watching this session, and I'm looking forward to doing some more.